What's up, everybody? It's your girl, No Mercy here. I'm not sure what happened there, but we, we're getting started. Um, it's Tuesday night. You already know what time it is. Time for No Punches Pulled with No Mercy. Some of you probably already know who I am. For those of you that don't, I am your host, Brooke Millbrook, formerly known in the fight business as Brooke No Mercy Deardorff. I am a retired professional boxer, held the WBC lightweight title until I retired was inducted into the International Women's Boxing Hall of Fame last year, 2022. I've been through some good, some bad, and of course, everybody knows a lot of BS in the sport of women's boxing. This is my platform where we talk the talk and walk the walk. We bring out the truth in women's boxing. You hear from pioneers, past boxers, current boxers, and of course, future boxers. We get down and dirty and speak the truth of what takes place in women's boxing. You definitely don't want to miss a single show here. So please make sure you like, subscribe, and you guys are sharing it out and join us every Tuesday night. Typically, y'all already know, usually we start off with my guest in the green room uh, and bring them out, but somehow we started early today. So y'all already can see who's here. I hope everybody's been well. Um, we've got a special guest in the house tonight, Heather the Heat Hardy. Um, you guys already probably already know all about her, but let me give you a little background. Um, Heather began kickboxing in 2010 when she was going through a rough patch in her life, struggling to support her daughter, sister, and nephew, finalizing divorce from her husband who wasn't paying child support. She began kickboxing to get back in shape after having her daughter, um, which is kind of how I began boxing. Um, after the military, I wanted to stay in shape, so I started boxing. That's kind of how it started. Uh, but her determination, passion soon was noticed by a professional trainer. Is it Devon or Devon? It Evan. doesn't matter. He's oh, not. Mm -hmm. Y'all know who it is. <laughs> Alicia Ashley's brother and trainer. Um, she began training with him at the notorious Gleason's gym. But after only 11 months of training, she captured the 2011 Metro and regional titles, went on to win the USA Boxing National title. And in 2012, she took the New York City Golden Gloves featherweight title, was awarded best female of the tournament. After that, you know, other choice what to do, but go pro. So she began in the ring with some greats in women's boxing She's been in there with them all, guys. Amanda Serrano, Shelly Vincent, Jessica Kamara, Naomi Basquez, Crystal Hoy, Jackie Trivolina, Liv Trivolino, don't let me mess that up, Nidia Feliciano, just to name a few, held the WBO, NABF, WBC International Featherweight, and Super Bantamweight title. I would say help me welcome Heather to the show, but she's already in here. How are you doing, Sam? Doing good. Thanks for having me. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what happened there. Normally, you'd be in the back, and then I'd, you know, I'd do that and then come out. But somehow, so they even messaged me. I don't know how it started, but hey, we're here. We're this is where we are now. That's where we are. I appreciate you taking the time. As always, I know you're busy joining me on the show. Um, first, though, we always kind of start back. Take us back to the very beginning. Tell us a little bit about little Heather. You know, you're growing up, all of that, and then like what led you to decide to go into the boxing gym? Sure. I mean, I, I grew up in um, a working class neighborhood. I was one of those kids who went to school with the key on my neck, you know, because mom and dad both worked two jobs and I took care of my brother and sister. So coming up, it, we were, I was real family oriented. I was like a mom. We talked about it before. I moved out of my mom's house, took my sister with me. And before we knew it, we were two single moms raising our babies, but no help little little tiny apartment i was working six jobs and she surprised me one day with a gift card to go uh, to a kickboxing class and i was like wow you know i'm pretty good at this and within two weeks of just taking the cardio classes the you know the kickboxing team had a you know one of their fighters fell out and they needed to grow my weight and the girl was like hey you want to do a fight and i had never even sparred before and i was like all right you know and uh, I won my first fight two weeks yeah. after putting gloves on. And yeah. it was the first time I ever felt like I was good at something. Yeah. You know, like I'd never tried it before. I felt like I was good at something. And the single mom in me, the person working six awful jobs with a college degree was like, okay, this is the guy that's going to help me make money. Yeah, so, absolutely. 
Yeah, I mean, that's phenomenal. I mean, my career somewhat similar with the amateurs because it, it just goes so quick because there wasn't as many opportunities um, for women in the amateurs. So it was you take what you could get. Sure. Um, but yeah, jumping in there right away, um, very similar to mine. I think I got out of the military, went to the boxing gym just to train, and the, the Chicago Golden Gloves was coming up like like that following month. And the coach was like, oh, you got talent. Like, you should compete at the gloves. I'm like, I don't know anything. And I'm like, okay, cool, yeah. And But he's like, you don't want to go novice. Like, you got to fight open, da-da-da-da-da. And I was like, okay. I had no idea what he was talking. I mean, I didn't know there was a difference between, like, novice and open and, like, all of that. I had no clue. I'm like, whatever you say, coach. It was like a hardcore Mexican gym, um, like, in the pit of the city. <laughs> you know, it was one of those rugged old Hell yeah gyms and he's like no you gotta you gotta fight open i'm gonna make you a book okay so he made me like this fake record <laughs> so i fought in the open division uh similar probably had only been training like three four weeks um i took second that first year but it was so funny because i remember the first girl was like six two and i'm only five four so i'm like what the hell have you got and she had like 60 something fights and i'm like what did you get me into <laughs> like what yeah, my, I remember my first Golden Gloves. I had only been training in about five, six months. I had a couple of amateur fights. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I lost in the garden. And I really beat the shit out of the girl. And they robbed me, you know? Because, yeah. like, I wasn't the cops and kids' favorite or whatnot. Like, I wasn't. Right. nobody knew who I was. I wasn't supposed to win, so I didn't. And yeah. I beat the shit out of the girl. But, yeah. Man, I look back at my career now, like, what the hell were you doing? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what were you exactly. Doing? Um, it's funny, but it's funny how it goes. Um, and it's just so quick, but yeah, like you said, just three weeks after first kickboxing fight, not long after that though, you did start training with Alicia Ashley's brother. I think you started mm -hmm. training with her first, didn't you? I did train with her first and then I kind of moved over because she was, she had girls in the nationals and girls doing competitions and stuff. So it was just like, they were in the same office and yeah. 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 So you started training um, at the Notorious Gleason's Gym um, with Devin Cormack. Everybody knows who it is. I mean, I do because I fought Alicia Ashley in New York. Um, so I know who they are well. Um, what's up, Women's Boxing Channel? Thank you for joining. He's from overseas, and he's um, almost always here. He'll have lots of questions for you, I'm sure. What's up, Michael? Um, but so tell us a little bit about um, that transitioning over to Gleason's. What was it like going to Gleason's for the first time and, and working out there and, and being with a real trainer? Well, I remember I, I walked into Bruce and he said, how can, Bruce is the owner of Gleason's gym, who's really like a father to me at this point. You know, like after we lost Hector, my, my coach at the beginning of the year, me and Bruce just really like kind of made it like, all right, it's us now. You know what yeah. I mean? So uh, from the very first day I walked in the gym, it was like, how can I help you? Like, what, what do you want the most out of boxing? And I was like, I want to beat everybody up. All yeah. right. He walked me into Alicia Ashley's office and I walked in and she had, you know, the WBC belt on the wall and all her fight pictures and stuff. And she's so like proper. Everything you see of her is who she is. She's so yeah. proper and calm and quiet and everything. She is. And I walked yeah. And I sat down next to her and she said, what do you, you know, how can I help you? What do you want? Boxing? I said, I want to beat up every girl at 125 walking. And he said, she said, no, you want to box every girl at 125. And I'm going to teach you how to do that. Yeah. So that really was like everybody being, you know, at this age in my career, at this stage, just being in the gym for as long as I have. Some people come into the gym and they're just brute muscle fighters. I don't care if you yeah. have me back. And some are real smart. They don't want to get hit, but they like everybody brings something different to the table. So yeah. this was the journey of me being, you know, you know, more like a dancer like her, right? Yeah. Like more conscious, not being the Irish girl from Brooklyn of getting hit. Right. Yeah, the hardcore brawler. Like that was yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> that was me all day. Um, and it's so funny. I think I've told this story before, but Everybody used to always be like, you got to learn defense. You got to learn defense because my offense was my defense. That just was my fight style. Um, and I'm like, what for? Like, my offense works. Like, why do I need defense? I don't care if I get hit. Um, so it was funny. But so they everybody used to rag me about it. Like, you got to just So the one fight I trained, just defense. Like, we did defense the whole camp. Because my husband, 
who mm -hmm. is my trainer, he fights like Roy Jones. Like that's his style. Um, and <laughs> so he, he moves a lot and does all the defense, but I just was the offense. That just was me. So he could teach me the defense, but so if we go to the fight in like the first two rounds, I didn't get touched, but I wasn't punching back either because I was so focused on movement that I wasn't punching. I was, but I wasn't getting hit. So I finally sat down like the third round. I'm like, this shit is not working. <laughs> like know. nobody's going to win because nobody's hitting anybody. So I'm like, yeah. this. so I went back to just doing me, but I could do it, but it would, it would have took a lot of focus to be able to combine the two. Uh, so, but yeah, I mean, it works for everybody, but she's definitely got phenomenal, phenomenal footwork. And I think a lot of it has to do with her dance background. Yeah, she was an Alvin Ailey dancer until her knees went out. So yeah, so sure. I, she's that, a that, very graceful movie. person. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so after 11 months of training, though, we talked about this in the intro. Metro regional titles went on to win the USA Boxing National titles, and of course the New York City Golden Gloves. Um, being awarded best female of the tournament. Tell us a little bit about the amateurs, like what stuck out to you, any like good memories from the amateurs and like, how did it feel to win everything so quickly? Sure, I was, I grew up in Garrison Beach in Brooklyn and it's like this little tiny pushed off little area where all the white trash came off the bowl from Ireland like years ago and we just manifested in this little tiny community, you know? And most people don't get in or out, so, watching myself go through the amateurs doing something i'm so my mother whooped my ass my whole life always told me nobody is going to give you a beat and work for me yeah so the one thing i brought to the ring is i wasn't scared and right. it was just like, shit i can do all this and all i gotta do is get beat up but beat her up a little bit worse yeah come on, come on. so right. so running through the amateurs being able to travel being in colorado i've never been to the the west coast before I remember I went up to the Olympic Training Center in um, somewhere in uh, New England. I'd never been up there, see snow on the mountains. And yeah, I mean, it was like at 28, I was looking at life for the first time. And it's kind of made me who I am today because I just, boxing is like giving, it, you give people boxing, right? Like yeah. it, there is so much inside it for you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's how I felt in the amateurs. I was just shocked at all the things some little girl from Garrison Beach could do, you know? And Yeah, like all the things you get to see and like the different things that you can do. And you're like, like, I never even knew this existed. Yeah, for sure. Like this is taking me places. Mm -hmm. um, Michael Orr wants to know, what do you believe has been the biggest lesson boxing has taught you to date? Um, this is a funny one because I'm at a cr crazy part of my career and my day. And I, I'd like to say that the biggest lesson I learned was that you really can't trust anybody, even people who say it's family. And my biggest takeaway, I don't know if it was a lesson, but my advice to anyone out there is to learn the business of boxing and know that it's not a sport, it's a business. Christy yeah. Martin said as soon as one ticket is sold, it's a business, it's an industry, and you have to know your place in it. And yeah. and I just, I just found that going through my career, looking back on people coming up and the way that they go through the system, and yeah. it's just like, wow. Yeah, absolutely. And that's very, very true, guys. Very true. Uh, Women's Boxing Channel said, don't forget Heat won one time UBF. I, I didn't put that. I have that in on my papers, but I guess I didn't read that in the notes. Oh. UBF entered continent. He knows his stuff. He knows he everything. He sure does. I did. I won that years ago. Her full title. I'm going to ask her about that Women's Boxing Channel. I'm sorry I didn't put it in the intro, but I'm going to ask her about it. He he He's on point always. It's, it's um, a valid question. I won the W the UBF title, and it really just speaks to how intertwined mine and Amanda's careers have been. Yeah, and handing on and off, and who was on top and who was coming behind. You know, like we were doing this for a while, and then now she just soared off. But the UBF was another title. It was like, yeah. you know, Jordan set that up for me. So yeah, yeah, it's just it's yeah. a huge part. Yeah, it is. Um, so to 2012, though, you did make the decision to turn pro. Was that just because there was nothing left in the Amis for you, your, your age, or what made you decide it was time to go pro? It was both of those things. There was nothing left in the Amis for me, and I had beat up everybody who 
at the time had a name. Yeah. And if I didn't beat them up, I fought them and I knew what they were, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I, I had losses in the amateurs and I fought some, some girls and who had lost too. So, so I felt like I was exposed to what was coming into the pros. So I was just ready at 30 years yeah. old. I was ready. Yeah. I mean, you gotta, you, you gotta be, I mean, I started a little bit late too. So yeah, I mean, you just gotta take what you can get and move forward. So keep going. Uh, either yeah. you're going to do it or you're not at that point. Um, and why not get a little bit of something if you're going to be doing it? Um, I, here we go. In the seventh, it was your seventh fight. You defeated Anna Gomez, second round TKO, winning the UBF International Super Bantamweight title. Um, how did it feel to get your first belt? Oh, it was crazy. It was a crazy night. I was close to my home in Brooklyn. We were in like, you know, Brooklyn down by where I grew up and in my neighborhood and all my people were there and. You know, just filling that first title, I'd won it all as an amateur to, to kind of feel like, all right, I'm on, I'm on the ladder now. It was, yeah. it was, I was past all those steps. I'm on the way up. Yeah, you're you're just, you're moving on up to the east side or maybe the upper side. Um, yeah, I kind of always wish that I would have been in New York when I was fighting because there was just so much more opportunities. Granted, I was, I was close to the Chicago. I was in the suburbs. Um, and they had fights in Chicago, but not very many. Um, and the opportunities just weren't the same. So, like, I, I think I only fought locally twice in my whole career. So, although I always traveled. Um, yeah, so there, there, was a, there was a thing where it was like, oh, my God, Heather's so spoiled. You know, because I got to fight so many of my fights at home. But I was, like, cold. Oh, boxing so big there. Tell, I was selling all the tickets. They could yeah. not. There was not a chance for someone to tell me I couldn't fight because of how many tickets I sold. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, there's always fights in New York, always there. everywhere. So why not? I mean, I would have fought in Chicago every time if I had the opportunity. There, yeah. the opportunity. Um, but 2014, you took on a tough opponent in Crystal Hoy. You did win by majority decision to win the WBC International Super Bantamweight title. Tell us a little bit about that fight. I know it was a very exciting fight um, and what it was like to add the green belt to your I mean, I'm sure you can attest to it that there's really no feeling like having Jill Diamond hand you a belt. You know yep. what I mean? As a female yeah. fighter, I mean, the WBC for females was really the one. Like, there's yep. a whole bunch of organizations, but the WBC was always the one. So, so to be able to be linked with them, to be a representative of the, the, the WBC, it was really huge for me. Plus, I did that show in Times Square. Um, my daughter was there. I mean, it was it was a big night for me. And I loved the fight. I mean, I really boxed well that night, I remember. Yeah, yeah, you did. Um, it was a very exciting fight. Um, Crystal Hoy is a tough, she's a tough chick. I mean, you gotta put, gotta give it to her. Sure. She's definitely a tough sure. chick. We all um, are. <laughs> yeah. Well, they all are. Yeah. I guess I should say she is. Yeah, I mean, we all, all are. are. <laughs> We're all tough chicks. Um, women's boxing channels. It doesn't state the title fought on box rec, which is a remiss of them, but I read the available reports. Yeah. I knew she won the title. Um, and I don't know if it says it on box rec or not. I didn't look, I just know she won it. Um, being a female fighter, I guess I just know a little bit more than a lot of people. I don't know everything. I know a lot about a lot of people. Um, tell us a little bit about, though, your two fights with Naomi Basquez. I had her on the show. Um, another great fighter. You fought twice. Um, split decision, then a unanimous decision. Um, I thought that was a very exciting matchup between you two. Tell us a little bit about those fights. It was exciting at the time because we both had a nice little following. Women's boxing was just starting to make a little waves. It was right after the girls had boxed in the Olympics for the first time. And, you know, people were kind of talking about it and a little bit more interested in it than previously. So it was at the Barclays Center. I mean, it was at the time, it was one of the biggest women's pro bouts mm -hmm. by two females who were really yep. well known. I mean, you can't you can't front on that. So the first fight was close. Um the first fight, I think I sh I got I got my period the morning of the weigh-in, and I put on that was it, and I put on like three or four pounds that I couldn't get off, and like yeah. I fainted in the sauna, and they carried me, and I basically told the girl like I fought for no money because she took yeah. my whole purse to fight. She was like, "You want to be two pounds?" So she took all my money, and I beat her, but I beat her for free, right? Yeah. Right. Um, they put like you know you have to weigh in this amount the next day, and blah blah blah, like. Making weight was 
like this. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, Especially when it's the day before. Yeah. And then the second time I fought her, I made the weight. We fought at a lighter weight. I made the weight. Um, and I boxed the balls off her, and I was so mad about it. Like, I was so mad at her the whole time. Like, bitch, you took food off my daughter's plate. You don't forget that when you're a single yeah. mom, like, just scraping for money, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Especially back but, and then, you were yeah. making then, literally. I mean, then I was mad. I got over it. It's what it yeah. is. Yeah. Like, but I'm I mean, happy. I love the girl, but. At the yeah. time, I was like, this bitch. Yeah, at the time, especially considering then we didn't really make shit. You no. Know, we didn't make any money as it was. So every little penny counted. Um, but I had sold so many tickets. I had invested in so much. Everyone was ready. I had, I think I woke up three pounds over. I might have weighed in at like 1.7 or whatever it was. Like that was literally, like I was, you you know the look like that. Uh, carried into on the yeah. scale, you know? Yeah. You're just like, shit. Okay. Yeah, I do it. And I couldn't do it. And that was it. Yeah. Yeah. I feel you totally. Uh, women's boxing wants to know, Heather, what was your Irish surname when your family on the Irish side immigrated to the USA? Do you know? It's Reed, R E I D. There you go, Women's Boxing Channel. Good question, though. Good question. History, history lesson at its best. For sure. Um, this, the, the big one for me, like that has always stuck out, was both fights were phenomenal, but 2016. You took on another huge name in women's boxing, another star at the time. Both of you were undefeated at 18 and 0. The first time you met in the ring, 10 round majority decision to retain your WBC international title. It was a barn burner, y'all. I don't know if, uh oh, we lost her. Hold on. We got to wait. <clears throat> She'll be back. She might have got a phone call. Hold on, guys. We're going to. There so she sorry. is. That's okay. I was, I, oh, I think I lost. Percent. Oh, there I you are. Charging my phone and I dropped it. Okay. Okay. I thought maybe your phone rang too. No. Um. So eighteen and zero though. First time you guys met, you won a ten round majority decision to retain the WBC title. It was a barn burner though. Tell us about your first fight with Shelly Vincent. Uh, it was really exciting. I mean, it was on NBC, which is like huge at the time for women's boxing. It was the same night Clarissa Shields won a second gold medal in the Olympics. And there was huge pressure, obviously, because, you know, the girl was talking so much trash about me for so long. And, yeah. you know, I was just like, God, I'm going to beat the shit out of her. And um, I did. <laughs> twice <laughs> you did yes, but you we're did. good friends now we really are good friends now <laughs> yes I, I you guys talk all the time i see stuff on social media pictures all that good stuff but yeah i mean the first the first fight had so much anticipation because of all it seemed like bad blood at the time um <clears throat> but yeah then the rematch must anticipate it 2018 you added the wbo featherweight title to your arson Tell us the rematch. Was it any different? I mean, obviously you won more significantly the second time than the first time. I mean, Did you feel like it was a lot easier? You just, you know what? No, but I think it comes down to the mind state. You know, like, like she walked away from the first fight saying, I won, I won, I won. You lost, I won. And I walked away from the first fight going, actually, I have the belt. <laughs> but also, what can I do to put you away? Right? And like, so I went into the camp not thinking, I'm going to do everything harder and stronger. Like, like, no, that thing didn't work for you last time. I changed my game plan. It was like, I boxed the shit out of her the last fight. I didn't try to stand in and, and, and fight with her. So yeah. 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 That's why, that's why it was easier, you know? Right. Um, just different game plan uh, to make it uh, more significant of a victory. Are you able to mount your phone again or are you just, is it because you're charging it? You have to hold it. Yes, hold on. Okay, I'm on six percent. I can do it now. I mean, if if you have to keep it charged, that's fine. He just asked. No, it's okay. Me. I'm on seven. We're good for like at least a half hour. All right. Sorry. <laughs> that was right. really I awkward, but I needed it. I get it. I get it. Um, one word for my description of Heather. He says guts. Definitely. She definitely has got the guts for sure. Uh, but not long after that, the first time you guys met in the center of the ring, 2019, the first fight with Amanda Serrano was super, super exciting for me to watch. I was super excited for you um, and her to fight. I thought it was it was a phenomenal matchup between the two of you. Um, I thought it was super close. 
um, even though you lost a unanimous decision, you two fought toe to toe and it was back and forth, back and forth the entire time. The first fight, um, tell us a little bit about that fight. Um, do you feel like it, the decision was fair or how do you feel the fight went the first time? I just remember it just being super, super exciting every single round. Yeah, I thought it was super fair. I didn't, I didn't watch the fight again until I was training for her for the second fight. I, 2019, I never watched the fight. Actually, my boyfriend now kind of like put it on, like watch it, you know? Yeah. And if I had to look and say anything, it would just be, she had much better punching technique than me. Yeah. You know, like I'm an aggressive fighter and, you know, but Amanda's cleaner and she scored the more effective, stronger punches. She's the hardest puncher I ever fought. So yeah, of course, the first uh, fight she won. And a lot of people didn't think I deserved the rematch. Like, oh, it wasn't even a close fight or this or that. And I thought it was an exciting fight. Um, and here's the thing with, with it. I mean, you have to look at fighters. That's what I always tell people because they always ask me stuff like this. And I'm like, there is only so much great opposition for fighters. Yeah. There's more now than there was like back in my time. But the best fought the best. And there was only so many best ones to fight. So Amanda, at this point in her career, I mean, she's literally fought everybody that there is that's I mean, she's been in all different weight classes and she's fought all of the best fighters in all of the different weight classes. So you have to really look back and see at that point who would be the best person to have give another opportunity to because there really isn't anybody new. Who else? I mean, who else knew is there really to give an opportunity to? There really isn't anybody. So you have to go back and look at, well, who might have a chance or is at least going to give a really, really good, exciting fight. It, that's what I always hope. The, you, there, it's not an endless list. Like, Amanda's been in the game since I was in the game. Like, it, since I started boxing. And she's fought everybody. So, you really got to just look at who... The, the fight with Katie Taylor, you know, I expected that to be the next fight. But when that kind of didn't happen and they went to something else, you got to pick the next best opponent which at, the, at this particular time was you. I think who, I don't know much about the girl she's fighting next. I don't know her very well. Do you know much about the girl I'm sure she's a champion. She always fights champions. I'm sure she's a champion. Yes, I'm sure she is, but I just hadn't heard her name before. Mm -hmm. I'm sure she is. And maybe it's just because um, she's not from here. So I really don't know much about her. And sometimes those are the ones that surprise you. Sure, for sure, for sure. Uh -huh. But yeah, we'll see what happens. But I was happy that you two were fighting again. I thought you deserved the rematch. I thought it was going to be, it was definitely an exciting fight um, regardless. And I liked the second fight. What did you go into the second fight different than the first fight to try to secure the victory? Uh, I had a much more solid team around me, people who were encouraging. And um, the game plan in the first fight was to box her, stay away from her power hand, try to move. And yeah. I watched the fight it looked like i was running scared and i realized that's not how i fight like i can't even i couldn't even believe that was me doing that like yeah i know how to box but there was no confidence there was no strength there was no there was a big piece of me missing that i was able to regain in this last fight camp with my new team and i had um the the plan was to fight her to yeah. stand up and fight her because you know, you run away, it's going to look like you're running away. Get tough, get in the box, stand and fight her. So I was sparring with the men in my, my camp for the whole, you know, 8 to 12 weeks. Getting ready, getting beat up, being able to stand there. Yeah. And it showed. Yeah. Um, speaking of the, the new camp <clears throat> for this last fight, you and... I don't know exactly what... Obviously, it's, I don't think I've ever even seen it on the internet. But you and Devin split ways. Um both personally and business wise. Um, do you feel like leaving that chapter of your life going into the new fight made a significant difference in your career and your life? I mean, you seem much happier on social media to me. I mean, I see your posts, but you seem much happier now and more like at peace. Is that I am, true or? I am happier. And while I'm not really one to converse about you know, relationships, because whether it's as a personal relationship or a business relationship, I mean, the bottom line is that we didn't work. Yeah. And 
I'm not really here to bad mouth anyone or even to give anyone the press on it, to be honest. Yeah. But like, I don't want to give them good press or bad press. Just say it didn't work out. Yeah. Whatever it's doing, it's doing. But my life has improved tremendously in all yeah. aspects since then. Like, I, I went into the last fight almost like I was carrying, like, this heavy backpack of rock. Yeah. When I look at myself, and I might cry, when I look at myself in the corner of that fight, and I see my facial expressions, like, in the locker room, I'm so sad for me. Like, I'm so yeah. sad because I know that girl. Like, I want to shake her. Yeah. <laughs> this is your opportunity. What are you doing? Why is this happening? To, you know, it, yeah. it breaks my heart. So I, so I really walked into this fight with so much love in my heart for the people who are there for me, you know? Yeah. And and yeah. I, I fought as best as I could. And, you know, this last one, this summer, everything was going right for me. I just didn't yeah. win. <laughs> it happened. Yeah. It, yeah. And like I said, it, it definitely shows, I mean, all around, I mean, those of everybody on the show, I'm sure follows you on social media as well. Um, but your whole persona, like almost like they always say you get the glow, like, but yeah. your whole persona and your vibe and attitude, like everything changed probably within the last year or so. Um, so you can just tell something was different. Um, so I'm, I'm extremely happy for you and I'm glad that you found that happiness. Thank um, you in your career and in your personal life because everybody deserves it um so I, I was super happy for you that you made the changes thank um, you yeah yeah like truly i was like oh she seems so happy now yeah um but yeah i was really truly happy for you that you moved on and things were going great for you thank for you sir sure. um michael wants to know if you can describe your time with bellator and the biggest difference for you between the fight preparations? That's a really good question. So um, Bellator is so professional and boxing is like a frat party. <laughs> That's know? a good way to put it. Yeah, boxing is like, you're looking around for the pizza like bar. Like you don't have no clue what life is happening. No, like you just, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in boxing, but you got to figure your way from point A to point B. And yeah. that's really what it comes down to. Bellator, they sent me rides for press events. They would, they would schedule the press events. I didn't have to do it myself. They would have all these interviews and just call me. Okay, we're going to pay. Like it was so professional and so business. And like boxing is more like... You get yeah. a phone call from like a promoter or a manager who's like, why are you making me so upset? Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. So that's it really was like, like in Bellator, I felt like an athlete. In boxing, I feel like just like a chess piece that's moving on the board, you know? Yes. It's so unor unorganized and unorthodox and you just never know what to expect, expect sure. especially as a freaking female. Um we talk about that all the time, but yeah, I've heard that a lot from every, a lot of people that have done the crossovers between MMA um, and boxing is just the total difference of schedules. Everything is on time. Everything is um, accurate. Like, you know what to expect. Um, the pay, obviously everybody knows the pay is better over there, um, but everything is just more professional. Everybody you work with is professional. Um and, and so that's the biggest difference. I, I regret not doing it. I actually started training MMA. Um, a trainer came to me and at the time he came to me was the only person that was big in MMA was Gina Carano. It was, that's when they asked me. Yeah. The yeah. MMA. yeah. And I said, oh yeah, I can beat her ass. Yeah, I'll do it. Uh, because I knew the money was better over there. So I started training it for like a couple of months, but I could not get into the grappling. Like I hated it. I hated the training. Like I hated going to the gym. I hated people holding me. I just wanted to hit people and they would always hold me. <laughs> so I was like, I can't do this shit. Like I just want to use my hands. Um, so I stopped doing the training, but I regret it now because I don't know. I would have loved, it would have been nice to do both. Um, yeah, because back then, I mean, it was so that was like when women was blowing up in MMA. Um, and I was like, I could whoop her ass easy. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I didn't do it. But it would have been nice. I should have should have slapped myself for that one. Uh, but the big question that I'm sure everybody wants to know um, now you are 41. 
you're only a year younger than me. I don't know if you knew that, but <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm 40, I'm 42. Um, so yeah, people always ask that, but yeah, big question. Everyone wants to know, are you hanging up the gloves or you still have more left in the tank? I got to find an announcement coming soon. All right. So if you heard it here, um, but it's okay. So since we're still fighting, who are we calling out? Who, who do we I, I don't fight? Do that. I, don't, I don't do that stuff. And you're, you're a professional fighter and you know what it is. Like it's hard enough. I do. Yeah. And, and, and there's something so degrading, even to myself, to call out another fighter because it, yeah. it almost translates to, please help me get some money. And that just oh, sounds yeah. really good. You know, yeah. like I'm ranked number one as a featherweight yeah. in the country. And like, I, I have to charge again, babe. I'm on 1%. Yes, plug it in. You got it. So sorry. Um, is there any wish fights that you would like to fight before you retire? I don't have any people I'd like to fight because like, I don't, I don't look at boxing like that. Like I'm not out here trying to beat girls up. I just want to make some money and do yeah. what I love doing. So I had said this last year at this time, I will take anybody 126, 130, 135. If they'll yeah. give me a shot as an opponent, I got it. And after I tweeted that article with, um, with ring mag, Amanda texted me, hit me up, called me like, let's get it going. And we had the fight made within a couple weeks. So yeah, that you know, was a quick turnaround. Quick turnaround. That's where I am right now. Like I proved in my last fight, I could still hang in there. I'm still a dog and yeah, I'm going to stay busy until something pops up. Yeah. Uh, Women's Boxing Channel says he would love to see a fight between you and Tiara. Mm -hmm. if but th there's got to be money. If it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. If it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. And the truth is, is she doesn't have a promoter. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, wh where's the money going to come from? Right. So I'm not into doing fights anymore with it. It's not relevant. You know what I mean? Like, that exactly. don't make sense. At this point, it's a, it's all about the right moves at the right time. And is yeah. it worth it? And and is it worth the risk? That's, so what that's I where I am. At 41 years old, you know what it is. Like, I'm yep. not going on a diet. If there's not money involved. So. Exactly. It's a lot of work, guys, once you get over 40. Yeah. Let me tell you, to lose yeah. some pounds. Yeah. Um, and you got you got things, other things to think about at this stage in your career other than, yeah, I want to fight. I would love to fight tomorrow. And people mm -hmm. always ask me, would you come out of retirement? If they called me and offered me a million-dollar payday, I would be lost weight in 20 days. <laughs> For sure. Okay. Yeah. But it's, it's, and, and that's why when I, I tell people why I after I had my second daughter, I retired because I had won the WBC title in Mexico. I made $4,000 against Mia St. John in the rematch. I basically paid my way there. By the time you take, I had to, you know, you had to be there two, three weeks early for all the press sure. for that big of a fight. Um, I, and you taken off work, you know, because I had work full time. Um, so after I got pregnant with her, I was just like, you know what? I got it. I got the title. I got the WBC title. I've fought pretty much everybody at this point in time. It's just not worth the risk. I had two kids now to think mm -hmm. about, and it just wasn't worth the risk. So, but I would do it for the right money, but it ain't going to come because at this point I'd have to work my freaking way back up the ranks. Just you to get that have to do a couple fights. To yeah. Get relevant. And I'm like, I don't got time for that shit. I'm too old for, for sure. that now mm -hmm. to fight two, three, four fights. I, I need, I do. No, no. But yeah, well, I got I got fun. a little one in college, so so yeah, you got it. And I still got fight in me. I'm still around the corner with it. I'm still in the gym every day, teaching clients. And boxing is I forgot more about boxing than most people know, or can never read in a book about. And that goes beyond the my skill because clearly I'm not the most skillful. But as far as the business goes, you ain't yeah. getting one by me. You know what I mean? Gotta, so yeah. like that's where I am. I want to do. A you gotta set fights. yourself for the future at this point. Yeah. And tr like retirement and mm -hmm. what's the right move at the right time. For That's sure, all there is sure. to it. Sure. Um, Hopefully everyone will still hear my name. <laughs> for oh, for sure. The for sure. Um, but we've talked about some of the incredible fighters that you have faced. Which ones do you feel were the hardest um, fights or that challenged you the most and why? Okay, I'm going to switch you back because I got a couple more percent. All right. I think we could do it for a little bit. So my hardest fights, obviously Amanda is going to be the hardest puncher I've ever, um, I've ever been in there with. I mean, she punches harder than anyone. I sparred with Chantel Cameron once, and I pretty much was ready to call the police at how hard that girl hits. Um, <laughs> she was like, "Whoa, <laughs> she fucking killed me." Um, 
but like I, I've had the pleasure of being in the ring with so many people like um yeah you know Christina Williams the girl who broke my nose the way her legs moved at me I was I was ready to stab her <laughs> on the way out of the cage I mean I've had some some wars yeah yes you have yeah, speaking of, um, I was going to ask you about it later, but Michael already asked about the MMA, but you've had some bloody, some bloody, bloody messes over there as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that picture is going to last forever, like decades and decades and decades, that picture is going to come up. Yeah. The bloody, yeah. it'll be there for, the for a while. The bloody nose, the epic bloody nose. <laughs> yeah. Man, but once it starts, man, it's everywhere, let me tell for you. For sure, I'm Irish. I mean, it's going to leak. Yes. So. Yes, I've got that big old bridge, and I swear, I think I've had my nose broke more than I can count. I don't even remember how many times, because as soon as it's hit, it's broke. If it's hit solid, it's done. It's over. Um, but so another big thing we always talk about, and we kind of briefly spoke on it, boxing is, everybody knows, a male-dominating sport. It's definitely getting better, um, and I'm super happy for the growth. But all of us females have been through a lot of BS in the sport of boxing, dealt with things we shouldn't have to deal with. Um, I've talked about a lot of the things that I've went through or did that shouldn't have to do. Can you tell us a few things that you had to go through um, in the sport that you just really shouldn't have had to deal with? Um, there was more of it early on. Now it's definitely been more streamlined with the way social media is and mm -hmm. the way women fighters have such a big following and such a grasp on the audience where 10 years ago when you and I were fighting, it yeah. didn't, didn't exist. So you wound up with, um, you know, managers who were trying to date everybody. You wound up with distributors who'd say, oh, well, we'll let you be the first female I sponsor if I can meet you in your hotel room. Yeah. You know? And I mean, it, we all went through it because yeah. we were all so hungry and so desperate. So it was yeah. like, it really, for me, I mean, it was just a matter of cutting off Okay, we're not going to use those gloves. Okay, we're not going to use a manager. I'm going to manage myself. Yeah, right? like, that's what I did. Read that out, but but yeah. you know, just like yourself, you sit back and you watch people be taken advantage of, and you're yes. just ugh. Ugh, yeah. yeah. Which but exactly I will say, I have not change since then. Yeah. early on. Which is yeah, exactly why I didn't have a promoter or manager. None of that. It was just me and my husband, and period. And that's probably why I didn't make a lot of money or any money. But, well, there wasn't much money then anyways. But, yeah, I wasn't had adding all that extra stuff in then. It wasn't it wasn't safe, really. It wasn't. Yeah, no, I, I, I hear you. And But I, again, I was an adult at the time. I wasn't yes. some hungry little 21-year-old uneducated. Right. Like, I was out in the world with my sister, with both of our kids. I was taking care of a family. I was a college graduate. I was in my 30s. Like, like bro, you're not getting over on me. And that's right. kind of how I maintained my career. I managed myself. And exactly. I cut that middleman out and all of the things that I might have fallen for at 17, 18, 19, 20 at yeah. 31, it's right? Right. No. Putting yeah. two kids through school. No. Exactly. But yeah. so it is a lot different. It is better now. For sure. For sure. Okay. Well, that's good to know because yeah. for all the future girls, they'll have to deal with all, all of the dirty mess because it got pretty messy. Um, back a, a decade ago or so it was pretty nasty um what advice would you give to all the young aspiring females that want to make their mark in the sport i would tell them um to learn the business of the sport that being good at boxing isn't enough to be a great boxer you have to know the business of the sport you have to know your audience like everyone has an audience no matter who you are or what you think everyone has an audience you just have to find it whether it's your background, where you came from, the neighborhood you live in, the music you listen to, the way that you dress, the way that you do your makeup, right? Like everyone has an audience. It could be your park friends. It could be your mom's yes. friends. Like, everyone has an audience. You have to find that audience and use it to promote yourself. So there's so much education and smarts. Yeah, in the absolutely. Of it's not enough to just be good. No, no, you got to learn the whole aspect of it, the whole thing. Um, beyond titles and victories, though, what is it that you hope to be remembered for most? Um, my realness, you know, like, like I've always been real. I've been real about how shitty women got paid. And even though I was getting an opportunity that I knew that my opportunity was only as good as I provided for it. I could be replaced with the next person at any time because 
I came from a time where you could only be a woman, one woman at a time could win. Yeah. There's one Ronda Rousey, right? Like there was one Gina Carano, there one woman at a time can win. And if you beat that woman, then that woman was never good because the new one is better. Yeah. Right. It was not a wide, and, and we're seeing now like so many champions, so many women, yeah. you know, different personalities, the way that they look, the way that they talk, like countries that we're from, like all over the world, like women are just good at fighting. So yeah. we've certainly yeah, come exactly. across the world. Just like, um, Ronda Rousey when she lost to Holly Holmes. I mean, that was pretty much everybody kind of wrote her off. Um, sure. Yeah, and it's sad. And that's in boxing too. It's in all sports. I feel it's, bad. it's in all aspects of female yeah, life. In life, yeah. It is. Um, people always ask me, and it's kind of hard to describe, but what can you describe to people the emotions you go through like moments before leading up to your fights? Sure, like those moments in the locker room, it's like you look around at your team, right? Your coach or your husband or your boyfriend or your partner, and you think like, I have put this whole room through chaos, hell, turmoil, parent, you know what I mean? Like, forget about the fact that I'm just like an annoying woman to begin with, but right. to be training for a fight, to be cutting weight, to be trying to make money, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I have been impossible to this room. How could I not win for them? Right. And that is the energy that I have inside me. Like I am a mother. I owe it to these people who've given me so much. And yes. you just feel like you're carrying the whole team on you when you go out there. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Um, and yeah, and it, that's why it's always nice to have like that real close knit group of people that's with you. Um, and not like a huge entourage. Like it's just... Yeah, I always want to have just a few people in the locker room, like the main people, um, to just stay focused and, yeah, just be ready. Um, Women's Boxing Channel says, so here's a 64K question. Would you or have you thought about crossing to misfits for fights? I say that as there's a ton of money to make and a fighter like you who's a face with a big rep would be a major attraction. I don't even know what that is. I don't either. Women's Boxing Channel. What is that? Misfits for fights. I mean, I know about bare knuckle fighting and I know about the MMA and I know about like different fight leagues, but I don't know what that one is. You're going to have to explain I that. Bare knuckle, I had conversations with them, but I wanted a lot more money than they wanted to give me because you've seen the way some of these girls look coming out of these fights. Yeah. The way I will get into a dog fight it gotta be for money. You know, I could, I could ruin these bad boys and then it takes me out of both sports, right? Yes. And boxing. So I was never able to bang that contract out, but I would have done it. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a very good point. Cause one, you can mess up your hands Two, You only got to take a couple hits and your face could be like, you're going to take, you're going to get cut. You're going to yeah. get bruised. You're going to get something broken regardless. Yeah. It's a street fight. For sure. Wow. I've had 61 stitches in my face. Something yeah. will open up. It is like It's science. going to open. Yeah. I mean, I've got cuts. I mean, it's going to open um, yeah. and it's going to be worse. So yeah, to go over there, it would have to be a huge payday. Yeah. And it never was. Some girls aren't making enough money for me. So yeah. And I don't know. I don't know what, I mean, they should just come over here and use the gloves. If you ask me, or even do MMA with the four ounce gloves. I mean, something's better than nothing. For sure. Um, what message would you like to give to your fans and supporters who've been there throughout your remarkable boxing career? I just want to say thank you. Sometimes you guys really, um, you know, say the kind of things that bring tears to my eyes because, you know, you're a female fighter. You know, sometimes you tell people you're like, oh, what do you do for a living? Oh, I'm a professional boxer. Oh, I'm an athlete. It sometimes takes my breath away and how remarkable it sounds. Yeah. Right? So to just have people really recognizing that, I've been doing this for so long. I'm one of the OGs, you know, like people really shout me out and it makes my day. Yeah, absolutely. And it's funny because my husband and I, now we own, it's, um, uh, it's like a food truck only won't have a truck. So we set up tents and he makes like this big kitchen with all these smokers. And it's like basically like a carnival style setup of barbecue. And it's called champs smoking barbecue. And every time we go out, cause champs, cause I was, you know, I'm the champ. He was my coach. And so like we get all these shirts and stuff, but like our logo has like the old school Rocky where, you know, you got the slab hanging 
and like me hitting it like with the belt and then like he's in the background like by the smoker but like with gloves on too because you know he was the coach and he fought also but and then it says like on our one sign because we're both veterans so it says you know veteran owned and operated and it says international women's boxing hall of fame and people it, it's funny how they don't get it at first like they look at it and they think it's just like a picture but then then they read it and they're like well really like is that really like you yeah <laughs> yeah so that's a true story yeah i'm like go read like the whole story because like we made it a whole thing like there's a lot involved in our photo like our photos and our shirts and stuff. we put a lot into it but yeah it's it's nice when people actually recognize it it was funny because one guy the other day was like we were doing an event for this guy and he's like he wanted to pay for his sandwich, but we were out there for his event. And I'm like, no, like you could just have your sandwich. Like you're, I'm not taking your money. And he's like, I got something in my pocket. And I said, yeah, well, my hands are registered. I got weapons. So I'm not taking your money. And he kind of chuckled and he came back like 30 minutes later. And he's like, you were serious. Like, like I looked like you were actually, yeah. Like, where do you think the picture came from? Like, it's not just a photo, like, okay. but yeah, it's funny, but being, being recognized and, and people saying stuff, especially now that they kind of see it in the, like in our logo and stuff. It, it's special. Like I like the recognition. It's just almost, it's the same thing as being a veteran. Like when someone actually says, thank you for your service. Like that means the world to me because we sure. don't do that anymore. Um, so it's the same thing. You, you're going to be in the same spot. Me, you'll be in the hall of fame too. You'll know what I'm talking about. And Michael says, where's my cornbread? He wants me to mail in cornbread. <laughs> <laughs> mail, man, mail, man, some cornbread. <laughs> Misfits boxing is the second year in the history of Misfits boxing, a crossover boxing promotion founded by English YouTuber KSI and run by Moms Taylor, Kelly, and Nissy Sutherland. Sol Sutherland. Misfits Boxing have currently held seven events in 2023. We're going to have to look that one up, Women's Boxing Channel. You stumped us both because we've heard of a lot of shit, but I have never heard of Misfits Boxing, but now I want to know. For sure. So I'm going to look it up. Apparently, he thinks she would be fabulous in it. Why not? <laughs> if it pays the bills. That's right. If it makes dollars, yeah. it makes <laughs> Yeah, she might look into that. Um, is there anything else that you would like to talk about that we didn't get to or let people know before we close it out for the night? Nothing at all. Thank you so much for having me. It's so nice to talk to you guys, talk to you. You were one of yeah. my idols growing, coming up through the sport. You fought my, my real idol, Alicia Ashley. So, you know, oh, I appreciate that. You, were Thank you at that fight? Say again? No, you that, was, that was before I ever walked in the gym. Oh, okay. When I yeah. fought her. Yeah. yeah, I know a lot of people tell me they were at that fight. And I said, why you didn't come say hi? Um, but I appreciate that. That means a lot to me. Really, it yeah. does. Um, so I, I definitely appreciate it. It was an honor having you on the show. I know you're going to do more great things. And you will meet me in the Hall of Fame one day, guaranteed. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma All right. I appreciate you. Have a great night, champ. Thanks, Brooke. You too. Good night. Good night. Bye, Ann. Bye. All right, everyone, thank you so, so much for joining me tonight on another episode of No Punches Pull with No Mercy. I hope everyone enjoyed the show. Uh, Michael, I'm going to have to work on getting you some damn cornbread somehow. Um, Melissa, Tommy Fury will be fighting on the zone with Misfits. Really? I'm going to look into this Misfits, you guys. Michael, do you know about this Misfits? I'm going to have to look it up, guys. Women's Boxing Channel, everybody, thank you so much for joining in for commenting asking question it makes the show so much better you do okay well i'm gonna have to look it up because i don't know anything about it so i'm gonna do my research women's boxing channel i'm gonna look into that um but please make sure you guys like subscribe and share i know that i've been a little bit crazy with the schedule lately um we've been doing like five six seven shows a week sometimes two in a day with our barbecue business that I was just talking about, it's been super, super, super busy, which is good, but it's also very hard to do anything. Um, also, my daughter's softball games are on Tuesday nights. That's the only night she plays. Um, there's only two games left in the season, so hopefully when that's done, things will go a little bit smoother and we'll be back on every week's schedule. Um, I am doing my best. I miss seeing you guys. I miss talking with you guys, but hopefully we'll be back on a weekly schedule now 
Um, she only has, I think, one game left. Um, and it's an early game, so we should be good for next week. But I appreciate you guys for rolling with me. Thank you guys for sharing the show out today. I've seen several of you guys sharing it out. I appreciate you. Um, do make sure you're following me on social media. Um, I have two pages, my Brooke No Mercy Deardorff Millbrook page, and, of course, the podcast page, No Punches Pulled with No Mercy. That's on all platforms, Facebook, Instagram, um, Twitter, TikTok, all of them. So you can always see who's going to be on the show from week to week so you don't miss a special guest. Um, but thanks for tuning in. I will see you guys all same time, same place next Tuesday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with the next episode of No Punches Pulled with No Mercy. But until then, remember, punch hard because nothing else matters. Have a great night, guys.